supply chain security is not a buzzword anymore. But still, there are people and there are organizations that do not take supply chain security seriously. Maybe it's because of the education uh, that, you know, what supply chain security exactly is, what you can do today with the open source tooling that is being developed by some of the organizations to help secure your software supply chain or at least make it better to a certain extent. So I, in this video and in the next few videos, will be exploring supply chain security tools that exist today and see how we can make use of them. In this video, first I'll be explaining what supply chain security exactly means in very simple terms and try to understand the concepts of supply chain security and then what all things can be done and what tooling is there around to help us achieve those things that can be done to, to improve your software supply chain. So without wasting time, let's get started. In this video, we'll be discussing about a tool called Cube Clarity, which is open source tool by Cisco. So welcome to Cube Simplify and make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel before we get started. As I said, supply chain security is not a new concept. There have been attacks. The attacks have been happening for a long, long time. It's not that it's happening only post 2010 or in, in a particular decade or things like that. See, software is everywhere. Software is in your life, in all devices that you are seeing, watching, using everywhere. And due to the rise in the number of softwares that we are using, there comes more and more threat to us for getting affected with the vulnerabilities which are there. Now, the thing is, uh, one package vulnerable can actually impact n number of industries out there that can be completely separate. But due to that one piece of software, everything down the chain will get affected. So as I said, software is eating the world. Yes, it's true. Software is eating the world because it's everywhere. More software, more dependencies on the third party applications and more prone we are to the number of attacks that are happening. And if you see the Sona type report, you can see the number of attacks have been increased by 650%. Why is that? Because the number of attack surfaces have increased a lot in the past decade or so. Now, earlier there were monolithic applications. Now we are running microservices. Microservices are running on containers. Then we have Kubernetes, we have cloud. So more and more dependencies have increased. Now we are dependent on cloud to protect their cloud services. Then we are dependent on the clusters that we create. We also depend on the third-party softwares that we install on the Kubernetes cluster, including the monitoring, uh, security, and all those things. And then also the software in the end that will be running the applications. Those will be also using some of the open source libraries or any of the libraries that can be impacted by a particular vulnerabilities in turn affecting us to a bigger stage. Now, let me tell you about one of the most popular vulnerability called Urgent 11. So the Army's research team, the Army's labs, discovered 11 zero-day vulnerability in VxWorks. What is VxWorks? VxWorks is actually a real-time operating system that runs on more than 2 billion devices. Yeah, you might not even have heard of it because it is kind of the, you know, edge operating system which have been there. And the vulnerabilities were found in the TCP edge stack that impacted wide range of industries like medical industries the you know military industries the patient monitors printers firewalls enterprise devices which are there so like the, the impact that it had was massive and it actually impacted everything after 6.5 version they actually launched the fix in the version 7 but still date we have more than you know i think 80 or 90 percent of the devices that are still unpatched now that's a huge number it becomes difficult when you are running things at scale in different set of industries. You might not even realize that due to an operating system, your system is impacted to such a deeper level. Now, VxWorks actually pose a bigger threat because say, being a real-time operating system, it is being used at, you know, the mission critical applications, MRI machines and, you know, F-22 jets everywhere. So that having the vulnerabilities actually led a threat even to the human life which is there because uh, let's say like in the in the particular scenario that you can see on the screen there is a attacker which is there and in a particular version of vxworks they send a specialized tcp packet 
and then take control of the firewall. Once they are in control of the firewall, they can SSH onto that particular device. Once they get control of the admin, they can actually do anything, manipulate the data, shut down, uh, you know, and man manipulating patient data is a big deal. It can actually cause a threat to life. So till there, the impact have been seen. So it can attack the network defenses, sonic wall, uh, you know, you can go to the shortened website and actually see connected to the internet with similar networks of these devices which are there. Then the attacker can also attack from outside bypassing the network security. That is also one of the cases. So Urgent 11 actually posed a big threat. Then you might have heard of Log4j, obviously a very popular logging library in Java that was found that, that got the vulnerability and it also raised the alarm of many, many, many softwares, application industries uh, where, you know, Java was used because it's the most widely used logging library which is out there and that caused a bigger, bigger, bigger threat and millions of dollars of loss happened due to this particular vulnerability. And that is where supply chain security comes in, right? Because you are using one thing that is part of a chain and chain and chain and then impacting you. And then, then the PyPy attack, like it's it's kind of a typo squatting attack where you try to malform the library in a certain way that it actually looks the original library, but is not the original one and might have a Unicode character or, you know, some typo which is there, but it exactly like looks that it is the original one, and but it is not having certain type of malware installed in it and then affecting a lot number of users out there. So that is why the supply chain security has started to become very, very critical. Now, there have been a lot of papers like this one. The Atlantic Council actually wrote a huge paper on, you know, supply chain security and what the some of the problems are mentioning, some of the attacks that happens, the incidents that, ha that has happened, like the, uh, you know, Ukraine grid incident that was there and some of the others as well. So you can see the deep impacts and the examples that have been there. So deep impact, hijacking, code sign, undermining code signing, open source compromises. So that, that there you, you can see the PyPy repository attack as well. So this is pretty interesting. You can see the attacks and disclosure year by year. And then you can see code base by attack and disclosure. So you can see the code base and the attacks by the disclosure which is there. This is the software supply chain cycle and there are attacks at every cycle of the software starting from design phase. There you are till the deployment phase. So you can see there are attacks at the design phase. There are implementation attacks. There are, uh, you know, uh, next level of attacks in the deployment like typo squatting is there here open source repository here the compromised SDKs so there are attacks that are at every layer and you can see uh, some of them are attack vectors uh, some of them are compromised software uh, some of them are actually the malware the hijacked updates updates in the maintenance that comes in so you can see at every level you have to be very very careful so in all the supply chain we have to be very very careful on what what we are using from where we are using to minimize the attack vectors that are there so I will link this particular paper in the description of the video. Uh, there are some of the other things that they have mentioned to improve, you know, uh, some of the supply chain security. One of them, the most common one is the SBOMS, which is the software bill of materials that I'll be talking about in a moment. And then some of the other ones related to open source software, how that can be done, like signing of the software and things like that. So now let's look at attack chaining. Let's say you have software A that we, we, where we found a vulnerability in a particular package. And then everyone gets impacted. How? Software B is using software A and software C is using software B. So every software can have vulnerability if they run same software that has got that particular vulnerability. So in this particular case, every software will be having that sort of vulnerability that is called attack chaining. There are different types of attacks that can happen. And, and I have classified them as like a planned attack where it is a super highly planned attack, which is there often having access to your supply chain. It's a targeted attack to, you know, a particular thing. Then there are known attacks when you know that your software you're using needs patching and it's vulnerable. So you know that, you know, you are using older version of Ubuntu or older version of things. It needs patching. The dependencies are there. Old libraries are there that you're using that have been patched in the latest releases. So you should always keep patching. 
and then unintentional attacks let's say you are committing your secrets your aws secrets or any of the secrets unintentionally in the repositories and the attacker gets access to those and then they and then also you become a uh, vulnerable so uploading keys to github unsecured passwords common passwords are the common mistakes over here duplicate like the type of squatting i just mentioned you know the pi pi attack which was there so it looks true but it's not true uh, then coming to supply chain security, it is like, you know, single base image compromise. The whole system gets impacted. There's a small library in particular tool chain that you're using gets impacted and the whole chain gets impacted. So you have malicious code that can be there. Dev tooling can be impacted. Uh, you know, CI, CD, maintainer credentials can be impacted. This has happened before. Example, the NPM one. Then you have typo squatting, PyPy, NPM. Tool tampering can be done and outdated code. So they are, you know, common types of the attacks which are there. So you might have heard uh, a lot and I always try to give this particular example. You know, uh, what are we doing with software? Especially, you know, when you say Docker containers or any software or NPM packages, we are just running. Like we are just running. It's just simply assume that there is a person and then there's a USB stick which is lying on the floor. Just pick it and then you plug it in your machine and boom it's gone we don't do that right why we are doing that with the software we know that it is wrong then why we are doing it with npm install and docker pull we are just pulling anything any image which is out there irrespective of you know from where it is coming who is the author have they signed the code or not i know that the code signing has not been easy but sig store has done a lot massive effort in you know code signing stuff but why we are doing this? So we are treating software these days, especially with the containerization era and, you know, availability and the ease of softwares that we have. And we are able to use those packages with so much ease. We are just doing anything which is not the right way. We should be only using trusted software or the signed software apps to remain protected. SLSA is supply chain levels for software. So there are different levels. Uh, that you can achieve for the SLSs, depending on how you are with respect to the best practices and some of the criteria that they have. So if you have your software supply chain secured in a way, then you can achieve those different types of different levels, different SLSA levels. Let's come to SBOM. Coming to the reports by the governments, you know, we have SBOMs mentioned again and again that they should be there. Why it is important? Think of a very simple scenario. You eat food. Each of your food packet is having a set of ingredients in there, which tells you that, you know, it has protein, it has, you know, it is gluten free or not. It has, uh, you know, a peanuts or it has some sort of uh, thing that can cause you allergy or not. It's helpful, right? Those ingredients let you decide whether you want to actually eat that or not, whether you are allergic to that or not. Similar to that for Software, it becomes software bills of material. It's the ingredient list of how your software is made up. So what are the dependencies that you're using, libraries that you're using, different licenses that you're using so that you exactly know if there is any issue and you don't have to use it. If it is by untrusted author, then you don't have to use it. It is a, If there is an old library that has known vulnerabilities, you don't have to use this software. If there are different licenses that can lead you to a software leak trouble, then you don't have to use it. So software bills of material is the ingredient list for your software in layman terms. And again, you can see in, in, in most orders and even in this White House order, uh, they suggest like you have to provide the software as, as bombs for software to the government, like which vendors you are using, which vendor services, you know, all the chain that is there. So you, you get that. Another real world example is like a farmer, farmer grows crops. Then it goes to factory, factory prepares and package. Then it goes to local shop, local shop distribute and uh, storage consumers, consumers just eat. But consumer do not care, trust the crops. But there are, now comes the tooling. Now there are different organizations that make sure that, you know, farmers are going crops properly. In the factory, there are different levels of checks, kind of health checks, but not the health checks that we do in Kubernetes. But those checks that it is happening in a proper way, the distribution is happening in a proper way or not. So all these things are taken care. And that is where we have tools that we can also use to help in the supply chain security, providing us the S-bomb and then using those S-bomb information to match them with the vulnerabilities and make sure we patch the software to the right versions 
so that it doesn't have those set of vulnerabilities and we are not vulnerable and we are safe in our software supply chain. SBOM benefits, obviously SBOM will get all the info, common info like author name, supplier name, component name, hash, version, string, identifier, relationship. It is great deal because it provides you greater detail about your software. It helps you with your compliance and auditing. It helps easily find those dependencies and you can do it in a continuous manner so that any time you release a new version, you can easily do in a CI-CD way of again analyzing the SBOMs then see if there are any more vulnerabilities that you introduced or not. There are two common standards which are there like Cyclone DX and SPDX for the SBOMs. Cyclone DX is a OWASP composition of relationships in a software. It is a bit lightweight. SPDX is a Linux Foundation project that supports RFDA, XLS, XML, JSON, YAML, ISO certified. It has better relationships. Now coming to Cube Clarity. Again, as I as I told you, in this kind of series, we'll be exploring some of the tools. The first tool that we are going to explore is Cube Clarity. Cube Clarity is a tool for detection and management of the SBOMs, software builds of material, and vulnerabilities of container images and file system. It can scan both your Kubernetes clusters, CICD pipelines for enhanced software supply chain. Now, we have talked about SBOMs. Now, in SBOMs also, there are various challenges, like there are various scanners that you can use, various analyzers that you can use. Uh, what all things you can scan and each scanner has its own format how to compare those results how to merge those results of different SBOM tools which are there and then how your software is actually vulnerable your application is actually vulnerable or not it comes in a two-part solution so the separate vulnerability scaling the content analysis to generate SBOMs and then scan the SBOMs for vulnerability so that's a two-step process so it creates a pluggable infrastructure to run several content analyzers in parallel and then several vulnerability scanners in parallel. And you can also scan and merge results between CI stages using the Cube Clarity CLI. Uh, runtime create scan to detect vulnerability post deployment and then grouped scan resources under defined application to navigate your object tree dependencies, your packages, vulnerabilities, application and so on and so forth. Now, before we move to architecture, one interesting thing with Cube Clarity is it doesn't try to reinvent the wheel. So it is not trying to create a new type of scanner or new type of vulnerability scanner or new type of SBOM generator. There are already tools like Swift uh, and Trivi and Gripe that gives you the SBOM generation and vulnerability scanning capabilities. Each of them uses different set of formats which is there, Cube Clarity maximizes the value by integrating those popular tools, analyzers and scanners and create a comprehensive view for you. So that's the best part of Cube Clarity. It is already using best in class open source tools out there and not reinventing the wheel to create something on its own. So moving on to the architecture, everything is API based. So anything that you can do with the UI, you can do with the CLI, it also exposes the API. So there is a full API specification which is there that you can use for interacting with Cube Clarity. Now, Cube Clarity is having a modular design. It, it is having a UI dashboard. So UI dashboard is a React application. Uh, it has like, it shows you the vulnerability, severity, um, you know, in your application resources, packages, scans, how you can do all these things, licenses. Then you have the Cube Clarity CLI and that it actually runs independently of the Cube Clarity and uh, can help you within your CI CD pipelines that you can use. Then you have the backend. So the backend modules actually consist of a lot of controllers which are there. Now there are different set of controllers about for different, you know, scanners like you have CIS benchmark controller, you have runtime scan controller, you have vulnerability controller, so different set of controllers which are there. Then you have the runtime scan orchestrator. Now this is responsible obviously for creating the scans, uh, monitoring the scans, starting the scans, stopping the scans, and then reporting the results. Next is the scanner job. So scanner job will run both the content analysis and the vulnerability scans for the SBOMs. Next we have the SBOM DB. Now it is it uses the SQLite database and GORM for its ORM layer and it supports the API for storing and retrieving the SBOM with a resource hash. And then you have the centralized scanning server. So all these jobs which are there, they will be doing the API calls for this to this particular vulnerability database, you can say. Uh, and get that particular information which is there. So how it would work is you will run the start scan. So you run the scan, the scan orchestrator will 
get the scan request or run the scan and then there will be a scanner job that starts it will get the s-bomb from the s-bomb db and then there will be s-bomb content analysis and then post s-bomb there will be a vulnerability scanner and then that will go to the centralized scanner server and then post scan there will be results for that and it will be updating that in the postgres db and you will be getting a vulnerability resource graph in the end that's how in short this works now cube clarity integrates with different s-bomb generators and vulnerability scanners you have shift cyclone dx go more gripe dependency track now let's see that in action actually so let's see this in action and try to understand how it generates what it generates how easy it is to install and how you can enable disable some of the scanners and analyzers we'll be using killer coda so we'll be having cube cpl get nodes the cluster is there now let's do the helm install as per the install instructions we'll do the helm repo add we'll do the helm show values because i want to show you some of the values now let's go inside the values so you can change the analyzer here you can add trivi or you know uh, and then enable trivi over here you can also add trivi in the scanner config by enabling dependency graph or trivi over here and then enabling dependency graph and trivi uh, by default only the gripe one is enabled as the scanner list but you can choose the other as well coming on to the right server server is already enabled and you can also enable the trivi server which is not enabled by default so for now we'll be keeping everything as default but you can enable a lot of things now let's install cube clarity go ahead and install using the values in the new namespace and it is getting installed uh, now what we'll do is we'll do cube ctl get pod cipher a we'll see some of the pods which are coming up you can see in the cube clarity namespace uh, you have cube clarity pod you have the gripe server you have the s bomb db you have the postgres so you can connect to the architecture diagram that i explained previously all the pods are running now uh, and what we'll do is we'll edit the svc to load port so let's do kubectl edit svc hyphen n cube clarity and change the cluster ip to node port get services get the port let's go here access the port and we can see the cube clarity dashboard now right now there is nothing on the dashboard because there is no scan that has been run so what we are going to do is we will scan but uh, we might not scan all the namespaces we'll try to scan only a few namespaces so that we don't put too much load and we'll create some of the deployment like uctl create deploy redis hyphen hyphen image redis uctl create deploy nginx hyphen hyphen image nginx so you can specify the default one and maybe cube system ones if you just need and we'll do start scan now when we do start scan you can see in cube ctl get pods it has started the uh, scanners so for each of the container for each of the application it will start a scanner and same for cube ctl get pods hyphen and cube system it has started a scanner for everything so make sure you are scanning the right set of apps uh, and you do not overkill your system with the number of pods that you are scheduling for scanning just everything. So here it will obviously take some time because it is scanning and it might go out of memory because there are a lot of pods which are there. Okay, I think some of them are already completed. Yep. Yeah. So it is 100% complete and it is generating the results. So all those pods have gone. And we can see that we have total vulnerabilities, which are there 10, 83 high, medium 75 and low and negligible. We can also filter by vulnerability and uh, critical. So now this is the application level of vulnerabilities. Now in application, you can see you have Nginx pod, you have the critical vulnerabilities, which are five. Now, when you click on application, you'll be able to see what all things are there, what all licenses are being used in that application and what are the set of vulnerabilities. If I click on vulnerabilities, it will take me to those Nginx vulnerability in the filters. 
and if i go to a critical vulnerability it will tell me you know uh, which kind of vulnerability it is we can go to the cve scanner like cve detail what all details are there for the cve and the application application resources here the fixed version is not available but if i go to vulnerabilities like all vulnerabilities you can see these are all vulnerabilities in different different package names which are there we can actually filter by a fixed version so we can say if the fixed version is available okay and it will tell me like for this particular vulnerability in libcurl there is a package version this r0 and in r2 there is a vulnerability which is available so there is a fix which is available for this particular package that can be updated then there are application resources so these are all application resources these are total set of vulnerabilities this is the scan s bomb analysis and the you know sift is being used here now coming to the dashboard you can see uh, a very fancy view of like you know fix available so there's a bandage like how many are available how many critical vulnerabilities are there out of which how many can be fixed so you can see that and then what are what sort of applications have been scanned what are the resources for that application top 5 so these are the top 5 elements so this shows the ui shows the top 5 elements then what are the top 5 packages then new vulnerability trends so for each scan it will tell you like you know how many vulnerabilities have been there how many vulnerabilities have been going down how many packages have been scanned how many applications have been scanned so it will give you all the sweet graphs uh, that are there and then this is the licenses like packages count for license different types of licenses and how many percentage of packages are there that uses those set of licenses so i think that's a pretty neat view and you can actually schedule the scans um, you know and you can uh, exclude or include the docker cis benchmark you can have different options for it maximum scans running in parallel uh, for the different namespaces you can do namespace scans and you can do all sorts of scans again the more you scan the more there will be different uh, you know parameters and good graphs that comes up and then keep on fixing you can keep on fixing whatever fix are available for those vulnerabilities you can always find the critical vulnerabilities because critical and high are the major ones so you can find those critical and high vulnerabilities and make sure that your app do not either use those or you know fix something or use a newer package or a newer version something like that so yeah, i think q clarity gives you good clarity of your Kubernetes cluster, the applications, what all stuff is running on the clusters, the S bombs and the uh, scanners. And it also doesn't reinvent the wheel. It actually gives you from the existing well-established S bomb generators with different format like Cyclone DX and the format also you can change from one to other. Um, so that is pretty interesting. You can do that as well as for the documentation. Um, you can uh, include Trivi or enable, I would say Trivi. Uh, for more enhanced kind of scanning and stuff. So I think pretty neat and pretty cool tool, Cube Clarity. Uh, I will try it out more. And if you happen to try it, do let me know how you try it and what all vulnerabilities you find, fix, and how you move ahead with that. Um, so I hope you got a gist of first what supply chain security is, why it is important. And there are certain tools, open source tools, which are available as of today to help you in your supply chain security in this video we explored cube clarity s bomb generation and the uh, you know vulnerability scanning in the future videos we'll be exploring some of the other tooling with respect to supply chain security even code signing uh, with respect to six store how that happens because code signing also is mentioned one of the you know things that can be done to improve or enhance your software supply chain security so that's it for this particular video i hope you enjoyed it if you enjoyed please give a like share subscribe and share it with your friends so that people get aware of supply chain security and cube clarity. Bye. See you in the next one.